Hi YouTube, this is Joe Kelton with Kelton Cutlery. You can find us on the web, keltoncutlery.com. Uh, I went to shoot a couple of videos today on the, um, um, the three-wheeled uh, treadmill belt grinder. Um, and when I was looking at that, I was working on it, mounting the last wheel, and I ended up moving that out of the way. And realized that I had forgotten to make a video on this. What this is, is a lifting and pouring, or a set of lifting and pouring tongs for clay graphite crucibles for the foundry. Um, you know, I recently got started in um, um, casting metals, and, uh, you know, I started off with, with just mild steel crucibles, you know, just a, a piece of, of pipe about the right diameter. Um, here, let me go grab one right quick. You know, one of these, just a section of pipe, about that diameter, you know, weld a plate to the bottom of it, drill a hole in it. Uh, your lifting tongs, you know, they go on the inside. See if I can't balance this right. You hold it up like that. You grab your hook, stick it in that hole right there, pour it, and then, you know, put it back in the foundry. Um, I started off, uh, my first setup with this had two sets of tools. I had a hook. You know, so this would be inside the foundry. I had a hook that reached in there, grabbed a hold of it, pulled it out, and then I had to set it down on a brick, turn loose of it, grab another uh, tool, and that one actually went through these holes and had a flat spot right here. Uh, it was a piece of flat bar that registered on this, and then you grabbed a hold of it like this and poured it like that. I really didn't care for that because... Um, well, molten metal is kind of hot, you know. I mean, you spill that stuff, and um, I don't think any good can come from that unless you're spilling it into the spot that you're wanting to spill it into, you know, into your flask. Um, but just spilling it all over the place, you know, even with aluminum at only 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit, I mean, that's still, you know, pretty much a wreck waiting to happen. Then you start looking into, you know, brass and copper and um, and iron and you know it, it just gets worse so what I did was I ordered up you know I started off with aluminum and then melted some brass and then melted copper in uh, my first uh, mild steel crucible and the aluminum worked really good the brass uh, started stressing it the copper pretty much just finished off my first mild steel crucible um, so I started uh, playing around with different things and found that mild steel works pretty good for most aluminum. Um, stainless steel, you can make crucibles out of stainless steel scrap that works really good on brass. Of course, it also works good on aluminum. And then um, uh, for copper and iron, which I did do an iron pour the other day, and of course, I didn't check to make sure that the camera was rolling before I did it. I just hit the on off button and figured that would be good enough and it wasn't so I didn't get a video of that. So I ordered up a couple of these, uh, they're clay graphite crucibles. This is the one that I did the, the iron pour in. And as you can see, it doesn't have the holes or the base plate, you know, with the, the little hole in it to grab a hold of it with your hook. Um, apparently what most guys do with these is they have a set of lifting tongs that they pull the cru crucible out of the foundry with. They set it on a brick, and that brick has already got a pouring shank, um, you know, underneath it. So you set it down on that brick and then lift the pouring shank up around it, settle your, your crucible, and then you go and you pour it with the pouring shank. And then, in the, the reverse, you know, to, to get the crucible back to the foundry for the next pour. Well, I didn't really care for, you know, the having two separate tools. So, what I did was I, uh, you know, I mean, I make tongs and stuff like that for, uh, for blacksmithing and bladesmithing, so I figured these were just kind of a large set of tongs, so I grabbed some rebar. Now, the way I did it is not, I don't think, the way that I'm going to tell you that, that anybody else ought to make one. But I just took two pieces of rebar. These are, oh, about a half inch or so. Um 
bent this, heated it up and bent this one at a 90, flattened out part of that, drilled a hole through both of them, um, put, put a couple of washers in between and then just hot riveted it together. Took a couple of pieces of flat stock and bent them, see what I mean, that's not really all that round, bent them, you know, close enough to fit the sh outside of the shape of the crucible, welded them onto the ends, and then put this little uh, uh, tab, I guess you would call it, on the top end so that the crucible can't fall out. And then, on the other side, welded a T-handle on it, and then just took an old coat hanger and, you know, made a, a, a lock for the tongs. So anyway, in operation, how it works is, you know, imagine the foundry's all hooked up and it's hot and, you know, that crucible's got a, uh, a charge of uh, liquid iron in it. So you, you take the top off, come up here, open up your, your, your uh, jaws, slide it down around the crucible, you know, give it a little wiggle, make sure it's all set right, and then come up here, engage your lock <clears throat> and the whole time you know it's it's safe inside there you don't really have to worry about you know tipping it over or anything because it's inside the foundry um, the walls of the foundry are close enough to the crucible that it really can't tip over in there so anyway get it you know get a good hold of it decide where it is that you're going to go with it pick it up let's say we've got a you know a flask right over Say we got a flask over here somewhere, we're going to pour it. Take your T-handle. I usually like to brace my arm up, you know, on my knee. And then just rotate it up, pour your charge. See that right there? This little part right here makes it so this can't come out. And you can see it's all loose. Because apparently these crucibles are, uh, they're not very... They don't like sideways pressure very much. So basically this, this whole thing is fit up to be a cradle. I mean you can see you can see that crucible has got you know an awful lot of wobble. It's not really being uh, there's no pressure being applied to the sides or anything. You know it's just holding it there. So anyway once you get done with your pour then, instead of setting it back down and picking it up with something else, then you can place it right back down inside the foundry, turn it loose, disengage your lock, open up the jaws, and then ease it on out of there without, you know, trying to, um, you know, mess up the walls of your foundry. Now. I'll probably build another one of these sooner or later. Um, I'm thinking about building a, a, a bigger foundry. That one seems to work pretty good, but uh, it's got the um, the K wool refractory blanket, you know, wrapped inside there and then coat, coated with satinite. And for aluminum and brass, it seems to be holding up really well. The second you start doing copper or iron, um, it uh, it seems to be quite a bit rougher on it, so I think I might end up building a, a new one, um, a little bit larger diameter, probably out of, uh, you know, an old water heater, and actually casting the, um, you know, using a, cast, a straight up castable refractory, and you know, to where the walls are solid and there's no, uh, there's no K wool in there. But anyways, when I rebuild, when I build another one of these, I think what I'll do is I'll find a piece of pipe instead of trying to bend these around and trying to match the contour of the the crucible I think what I'll probably do is uh, I got too many things going here is grab a piece of pipe that fits you know that closely fits the uh, the diameter of the crucible and then cut a section of it off you know two three inches wide however much cut it off and then maybe heat it up and kind of bend, you know, uh, 
stretch the lip of it out to where it's got a little bit of a taper instead of being straight walled. Then go ahead and weld the, you know, the ends of the jaws on there and then make my cuts to separate it to where, you know, it'll open and close. But anyways, um, you know, I mean, I'm sure that the, uh, uh, that the other setup, you know, where you have lifting tongs and then uh, a pouring shank, you know, I'm, that seems to be kind of the way that it's supposed to be done. Um, and I'm sure it's a really good way. I just, uh, I just don't care for it. Like I said, with that molten uh, metal, I want it to be secure in the forge. I want to be able to grab a hold of it, lock it into the tool, and it stay inside that same tool the whole time from the second it, or before it leaves the foundry, pulling it out, doing your pour, putting it back in, then unlocking it, and then removing the tool to where that charge of molten whatever kind of metal it is, is, you know, it's secure at all times from before it leaves the forge until after it goes back, or before it leaves the foundry until after it goes back into the foundry. Anyways, uh, like I said, really simple, you know, just a whole bunch of scrap material out of the scrap piles. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.